All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this afternoon. This is James Salcedo again at the National Low Income Housing Coalition field team. And this webinar is an update on Our Homes, Our Voices, our National Housing Week of Action campaign, where we're going to spend some time talking through um, our plans and updates for the Week of Action in terms of what NLHC is preparing for and planning for uh, throughout that week, as well as for the next couple of weeks leading up to our Week of Action. We're going to take some time getting to hear a little bit about uh, local events being planned that we're already aware of and go over some additional resources that we've produced and put uh, publicly available up on our website. And then uh, we'll use most of our time this afternoon to hear from all of you on the line with us. We'd love to hear from all of you regarding the events that you're planning and sort of invite you all to share information with each other regarding what you've got in mind. So to introduce our presenters, our speakers for today, uh, first we'll hear from our senior policy analyst, Elaine Weiss, our, my two colleagues on the field team, Sarah Jemison and Joey Lindstrom will also be speaking, as well as our communications associate, Lisa Marlowe. In terms of our agenda, of course, we'll go over an overview of the campaign. Elaine will talk about the latest on the federal budget process, because, of course, this is a campaign responding to some very troubling uh, proposals in the federal budget proposal as they relate to housing and homelessness programs. We'll talk about national events and our plans for the week. We'll talk about current events uh, being planned locally that we're aware of. Uh, best practices for organizing events, for communication strategy to promote your events. Uh, talk about some resources, again, that we've produced and made available up on our website. And then, of course, as I said, we'll spend most of the time capping off the presentation, uh, going over and inviting all of you on the line with us to share uh, with each other what you've got in mind and what, you, what you're planning for uh, this last week of July. All right. Thank you so much, James. Hi. Again, my name is Elaine Weiss, and I'm a senior policy analyst here at the National Low Income Housing Coalition. So I want to tell you a bit about the campaign. So right after the election, we kept hearing from folks out in the field that there was a lot of energy around doing something around um, affordable housing and the needs that we know exist. Um, and that became even more heightened um, once President Trump put out his budget that proposed extreme cuts to the HUD budget that amounted to over $7 billion in cuts, or about 15% of the budget. So given all of this energy and renewed sense of urgency of having to, of, of, of addressing these cuts um, being proposed, um, we um, decided to put on this event um, to really bring attention to the needs of affordable housing and the, how we need to be investing in these programs instead of cutting as the administration has proposed. So through our Campaign for Housing and Community Development funding that specifically works on um, uh, uh, federal funding for these programs, we have organized this event with our partners both here in DC and out in the field um, to again really bring attention to the great need that we know exists to invest in uh, affordable housing and community development. So getting to that, let's move to the next slide. Um, to give you a sense of where we're at in the budget, like I said, President uh, Trump put out his budget request. That's nearly what it is, a budget request that it, it's proposing these extreme cuts. But now we've moved on um, to the point where now the House is about to take up their um, proposal for uh, funding for uh, HUD and uh, the Department of Transportation. Tomorrow they'll be marking up their uh, bill, so hopefully we'll get a uh, uh, get to see the text of that bill to see how bad those cuts are. We've already heard that some programs will um, see cuts, including um, CDBG and HOME. Um, we know that each year costs go up to um, four HUD programs, so it costs more money to renew all the vouchers. It costs more money to renew the rental assistance contract with uh, for um, project-based rental assistance. So because of those increasing costs, it means that um, if we were flat funding, um, these programs, it amounts to a cut. And given the, the budget numbers that the, the committee is working with, we know that this bill is going to be a really bad bill um, that they'll put out, um, which is a, 
while it's bad, it's a, it's a good, it's a thing that we can galvanize around and, and to point to that why we need um, this week of action to raise the um, awareness of why Congress needs to um, work together um, to lift these artificial spending caps so that we could properly fund these programs. Um, the Senate is aiming to mark up its bill the last week of July, so we'll see what they do as far as uh, 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 providing funding to HUD programs, but that's where we're at right now in the budget process. Great, thank you, Elaine. Um, before we move on to talking about our local events that are planned for at the moment, uh, I wanted to offer everyone on the line a reminder. I didn't mention this earlier, but of course, as always, this recording, this webinar is being recorded, and you'll get a recording as well as a copy of today's PowerPoint slides over email later today. So you can look over those after the fact and share them with people in your network. Um, and also, at the end of the webinar, when we move into an open discussion and questions, you're welcome to be able, you're welcome to type in any thoughts, comments, questions that you have in the questions box of your webinar control panel. Um, but uh, you're also welcome to ask your question or any offer any comments that you've got over your computer or your phone. Um, we can we can unmute folks individually to have a more open conversation that way as well. Great, thanks so much, James. Um, so this is Sarah Jimison on the field team, um, and as Elaine talked about. We had uh, people from around the country asking what could we do, what actions are we going to take. And so we planned this week of action um, to really be able to engage folks on the local level. Um, and to that end, we have currently 29 events uh, planned in 19 states. Uh, I say currently because that seems to be a number that is changing um, definitely by the day around here, sometimes by the hour. And we're really excited about that. So we have um, events you know, ranging from letter writing campaigns and postcard writing campaigns um, to really large rallies doing petitions um, up to 5,000 signatures, inviting governors and mayors, uh, members of Congress and their staff. So we're really excited about these events, both those um, that are going to be on the really local or community level and also those that are city or statewide. Um, so we're really looking forward to those. And we also know that some events are still being planned. Rest assured that even if you don't have all the details, um, We'd love to know where you are in the process and if there are people we can connect you to who are doing a similar event elsewhere um, or if you're doing an event that's just going to be you know, in your community or in a specific development, it's not really open to, to outside people, we'd still love to know about it um, so that we can, can really raise the awareness for just how big um, of an issue these cuts to housing are and how many people and how many communities across the country are resisting them. So feel free, you, know, you can write it in the question box or you can send an email to our homes at nlihg.org and let us know about these local events that are happening. Um, and then in addition to those events, um, these events happening on the local level, we're also going to have national events um, for during the course of the week. And so these are things we hope that some of them we hope you're going to be able to join in. Some of them, if you're in the D.C. area, we certainly hope you can join or you can email or call your member of Congress urging them to come. So starting on Tuesday of the week of action, we're going to have a national call-in day. And we'll send out more information about this with specific scripts to use and phone numbers um, to really try to make that as easy as possible for you. Um, to go ahead and call your member of Congress, tell them your story, ask members from your community if you are doing an event, um, and you already have attendees or you have a Facebook page, please go ahead and, and put out information about this call-in day so they can take part two because this is one of those things that is great if a few people do it, but the power really is in the volume um, of calls that a, that a member of Congress may receive. So certainly try to push for as many um, of those meetings as possible, or as many of those calls as possible. And then moving forward in the week on Wednesday, we're going to have a press conference um, on Capitol Hill right behind the Capitol. Um, we're going to have members of Congress speaking, people who have experienced homelessness speaking. Um, Diane Yantel is going to speak, as well as Nan Roman, um, President and CEO of the National Alliance in Homelessness. So it's going to be a large event, a really exciting event. And so if you're anywhere around the D.C. area, we'd love for you to come um, be present for that. We'll have signs you can hold and posters, all that sort of thing. So you can come out. I'm hoping to have members of the media as well. It'll all be um, videotaped. It's going to be a really great event. So we hope that you can come. Um, on the 26th at 10 a.m. We hope that we will have um, a, a congressional resolution um, released there as well, but we're still waiting on that. But we're excited for the event um, and hope that, that you can be there. And then moving forward, um, actually later that day on the 26th, we're going to have a, tw a tweet storm. This is another thing that you can engage, with, engage in, 
even if there's not an event in your community. Um, but you have a Twitter or you want to make a Twitter for this, that's great. We can help you do that. Um, we're providing tweets that you can use. Um, just copy and paste them in or you can write your own. Um, either one is great. Using the hashtag, um, our homes, our voices. And so that will allow all those tweets to show up on Twitter together as this, again, kind of an issue of volume as well as message. And so we're excited to do that at 2 p.m. and that's Eastern time um, on the 26th. And then um, Friday, to kind of cap off this week of action, we talked about, you know, making your voice heard, talking to members of Congress, um, having this message out there. But the really kind of the next and the most vital step is to make sure that, that you and members of your community are registered to vote. Um, because members of Congress care what you have to say if you're the constituent. They really care if you're, if you're their voter or you could be their voter. Um, and so we're going to end this week kind of, you know, it's our homes, our voices, and now our votes. And so on the 28th, we're going to mobilize around registering people to vote. Um, and there'll be resources uh, for that on our website. Um, but if it's something that you think you can do in your community, um, even if you're not able to do things earlier in the week, this is a really great way to, to get engaged, um, to mobilize people, and to make sure that this is not something that simply ends on, you know, July 29th, um, 2017, but something that continues into the next election um, that really we see that the people can be um, housing voters, that they can make housing their most important issue in an election. So we certainly hope that you will get engaged in your community, get engaged in the national events, and then also get engaged in a way that's going to help you continue um, your participation through voting um, this year and in years to come. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to, to Joey Lindstrom, who's going to walk through some kind of best practices for your event, um, what you should be considering, how to plan it. Um, and again, if you have any questions for Joey, feel free to just type them in, um, and we'll ask them uh, to the group at, at large. And so usually, if you have a question, somebody else has it too. So don't hesitate to ask those. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, I want to start just by saying I'm about to review some best practices for local events. But I do that just as um, sort of general guidelines. Uh, part of what we're doing with this week of action is really trying to localize um, everybody's action and everybody's resistance rather than just bringing people to DC for a march. So if any of the best practices that I'm talking about aren't things that are going to work or work best in your community, um, we certainly trust your judgment and would appreciate your feedback on what you're doing instead. Um, so just some basics uh, before your event. Um, obviously, you want to be clear and consistent in communication, uh, especially if you can with um, the time, location, and uh, date of your event, uh, because we're about two weeks out now for most events. Um, so we should be getting as much um, specific information about how to attend or participate as we can. Uh, for those of you who are doing an event that is a call-in day or something that involves online participation, um, simply let us know how um, you're inviting people, what you're doing is a, a Facebook event or do you have um, an event website, a blog space, an event flyer. Uh, make sure we have that and we can get that up on um, our website and then we can do, uh, blast it to folks we know in your community who might want to participate. Um, make sure you're recruiting and training volunteers if that's necessary, necessary for the type of event you're doing. Um, again, there's a pretty broad um, range of different types of events. Um, but if your event is more of a rally uh, or a march, uh, you're pro you'll probably want to have um, various volunteers. If you're doing a teach-in, uh, you'll want to have people who are in charge of doing all the audio, manning the sign-in desk, um, and various things like that. So understanding what roles you'll need and uh, who needs to be trained up is really important before the event. Um, you always want to do a run through, think about all the si small details. Uh, you'll want a sign in sheet so that you can connect with everyone after the event is over um, and continue to have them take action on housing uh, and communicate with your members of Congress. You'll want to make sure you have you know, all the pens you need and signs for how to navigate the space and so forth. Um, I imagine many of you are doing indoor events because this is, of course, July. Um, but obviously, also invite your senators and representatives to attend your events. And don't only invite your friends. Uh, invite some of the senators and representatives who sometimes don't agree with you and, and need to be um, informed on this issue and simply need more exposure about the people who care about it. Uh, so if you need help accessing the information for your senator or representative, uh, scheduler, um, get in touch with us and we can provide you with the uh, email and phone number uh, that is most relevant. Uh, don't be surprised if when inviting senators and representatives, you very often will end up with their staff members attending the event rather than the elected official uh, themselves. 
And this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, staff members very often can devote more time to your event and can um, ask good questions, but sometimes if you can get an elected official, that helps you to promote it with the media as well. Okay. Use great visuals. Um, I included a, a couple of pictures here from some recent events. Um, of folks uh, making great protest signs. Um, use, use visuals so that you can take pictures that are tweetable, that can be shared in web space that um, journalists might like to use. Um, so use as many good visuals as you can. If you have um, some creative people in your network, uh, put them to work and, and produce some good banners. We'll love to see uh, what you're producing and we'll love to retweet all of that uh, when it's happening. Uh, during your event, uh, obviously you want to make sure everybody can get to where they need to be. Um, and as I mentioned, collect names and emails of attendees. Uh, make sure your speakers represent a, a wide range of affordable housing um, residents uh, and people who are actually very directly impacted by the issue. Um, always encourage speakers to be brief and clear. Uh, give them a, a very specific number of minutes for which they should be uh, planning to address the audience. Uh, because sometimes that can get a little out of hand. Um, and then obviously you want to make sure that all the attendees have an action step they can take. So whether your event is a teach-in or you're doing a film screening about affordable housing and homelessness, make sure that people have a letter they can write, a postcard they can sign, a phone call they can make, a tweet that they're supposed to be putting out there. Uh, these are the things that we're really encouraging people to do because ultimately uh, while we want communities to get together and explore the issue of affordable housing, it is in its very essence a week of action, and we're hoping for people to um, to take really decisive action. And then after your event, you will want to uh, send a follow-up email, um, and hopefully you'll be able to use your event for week of action to build your network, uh, to meet new people in your community who want to be involved and who want to be advocates along with you. Um, make sure you write thank you letters, of course, to any speakers or elected officials um, who attended, and share images, uh, any of your photos on social media or in your newsletter. Um, finally, if you, uh, if you had a member of Congress or their staff um, participate, make sure you follow up with thank yous, but also to answer any questions they had. But even if you invited senators or representatives to attend and they didn't send anyone from their office, um, you should definitely follow up with some information about, you know, sorry you couldn't make it, here's what happened, here's why it's important, we had a great crowd, and you should be aware of these issues that we're working on. So even in their absence, there's still an opportunity to use the event um, to communicate with and influence your members of Congress. All right, and so now we're going to turn over to a few uh, best practices with regard to communication. So I'm going to throw it over to Lisa Marlowe from our communications team. Hi everyone, again this is Lisa from the communications department. I'm really just going to piggyback on all the great resources and talking points previously presented and just um, give a brief overview or, or share um, some best practices for communications. Of course, as everyone mentioned, this is about a week of action, so we want to see those actions. Uh, so please share, 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 and share some more. Um, you can definitely utilize Facebook to create a Facebook event um, about your event and then share it through your Facebook network or you can send it um, and uh, join the Facebook groups, Our Homes, Our Voices page, and we can definitely push that out through our network. Um, but the point is that you don't have to use Facebook events. You can create it through Eventbrite or any other uh, event created, uh, creation platform, but just want to make sure to share that information with us, and we'll in turn push it out through our social media networks, as well as uh, post it on the website, on Our Homes, Our Voices website. Um, as also, again, previously mentioned, please use great visuals. Um, please utilize Twitter. You can always tag NLIC on Instagram, and we'll be definitely uh, happy to push those visuals out. Uh, video, 30-second video, one-minute video is always very impactful. Um, so feel free to use your phone and just record those brief moments of either uh, you preparing for your event right during your event or right after your event, a quick snapshot of a speaker um, at your event would be very impactful. Um, lastly, we wanted to make sure that we um, let our local media know what we're doing. Um, the local media is, national media coverage is great, 
the local media uh, generation and buzz always bubbles up to the to the national uh, attention. So we suggest that if you can write blogs, submit op eds um, using your state specific data um, or your city wide uh, connections. Submit those op eds to your local papers. Do that the week before, that week during the week of action. Um, you can't. You usually cannot submit um, printed uh, something that's already printed into a publication. So you want to make sure that you wait until after if you do receive a, a decline to just go ahead and move on to the next publication. But be sure to utilize your local media contacts and just reach out. Um, so I think you know we have great resources as well. As previously mentioned, we have on the resources page, we have sample tweets, we have uh, Facebook post instructions, we have posters, we have um, infographics that quickly uh, captures the importance of this campaign that you can share with social media. So um, I think really utilize those resources pages and push them out through social media and uh, keep in contact with your local media. Thank you, Lisa. So now speaking of resources, as uh, all of us have alluded to uh, during this presentation, uh, and several people on our team have been uh, busy at work the uh, last few weeks putting together some great resources to help all of you uh, host and, and produce the most successful and impactful events you possibly can. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes just to walk you through some of what we've got available on our website. Uh, which is ourhomesourvoices.org, where you can find all of these resources. All right, so here we have the home page of our website. And now if you look up at, yes, at the top of the page, uh, of course, if you hover over the About um, button, you'll get uh, some good detailed information on the issue that we're all coming together around, around the need for a greater uh, federal Resources for Housing and Homelessness Assistance Programs, the principles uh, that unite us, our shared demands, um, as well as information on all of the partner organizations that are taking part in this campaign alongside NLIHC and CHCDF. We have a listing, as Sarah mentioned, of all of the local events that we're currently aware of. Um, some of you on the call may be working on events of your own that we just aren't connected with yet. If that's the case, please email us or give us a call. You can email us at ourhomes at nlihc.org. You can give us a call on our main number. And we'd be more than happy to hear more about your events and add uh, your events to our long list of growing lists, too, of, of local events taking place across the country on July 22nd through the 29th. If you go over to Get Involved, this is where we have more detailed information on sort of how to, how to put together different types of events on that broad spectrum of types of events that we suggest folks uh, take part in, uh, participate in, or host during the week. Everything ranging from a press conference and a teach-in, uh, inviting elected officials on a site visit, uh, of, a, of a housing, uh, of an organization providing housing, uh, an in-district meeting with the with your member of Congress, or taking part and promoting our call-in day. Information on all of these uh, is available here on this page. And if you click any of these links at the bottom of that section paragraph, you'll get directed over to more detailed information, um, which you can see down here. And this longer uh, sort of piece of information exists for each of those, uh, each of those event types listed here. Then if you click over to the resources tab, this is where we've got more of the information that uh, we've all referred to today. Uh, so we have sample press releases that you can circulate to local media. We have a sample invitation that you can send to the office of your U.S. representative or either or both of your U.S. senators. We have sample talking points and tweets that you can post and share. We have instructions on how to create a Facebook event page, uh, which will help you circulate and promote the event, which we, can, we will also then link to on the local events page of our website. We have sample op-eds, uh, which alongside a sample press release, you can circulate to your local media outlets. 
Uh, down here in this middle section, we have sample uh, letters and postcards that you can print up, uh, customize, and uh, circulate as part of sort of how you spread the word on why this campaign and why this issue of affordable housing matters to you, to your communities, to the organization and communities that you serve. Um, here's just one example of that. And then an example of our postcard that we've created. And this is uh, in, sort of in line with a type of event that uh, many organizations are taking part in this month, a postcard writing campaign where you can print these up uh, and make them available at, you know, at community or local events for each individual to fill out a card like this with their name, uh, with information on why this issue matters to them as an individual and send it off to the local office of your member of Congress. That piece being important, that we want to make sure that if this is something that you're doing, that you send these to the local office, not to the DC office of your members of Congress because we found that sending something like this to the local office is a, an easier way of getting that information and the fact that your community is so concerned about this uh, to the elected official. And then down here on the bottom section of this page, we have um, some great graphics uh, that our communications team has put together for your use. Uh, sample social media images uh, up here. Down here, sample. These are also great as social media posts. These four infographics here. Uh, down here, sample promotional pro posters, which are intentionally designed to be at the right scale for you to uh, send them off to a printing company and, you know, have them automatically printed at poster size without you having to do any messing with the design. Um, and sample rally posters that similarly you can print up on large paper and print with or bring with you to local events. If I go back up to the social media images, I just wanted to show you on one of these examples. Um, of course, you have the image itself, which if you right-click on it, you can download that image and keep it uh, for you know, any, any way that you want to circulate it across your community. But you can also click right here on the Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram buttons. And by doing that, um, well, if you're logged into Twitter, it'll work a little differently. But um, you can actually click these buttons right down here. Uh, and there we go. This one's working. Uh, so show you again. Uh, just clicking right here on the little Twitter bird will pop up a, a new window where you can where you'll automatically get a short message and that image that you can go ahead and send out from your own Twitter account to help us spread the word and to join us in promoting this campaign on social media. If you have any questions on this or anything else, of course, feel free to get in touch with us. And now that's all that we've got in terms of our prepared time for the presentation. So I want to move us now um, into talking about uh, what all of you have planned, what you're working on, and what you've got planned uh, for our National Housing Week of Action. We want to hear from all of you regarding what you're thinking about, talking about with your communities, uh, what you've got planned, and, and sort of what's in front of you. So as I mentioned earlier, feel free to type in any questions or comments right into the question box on your webinar uh, dashboard. You can also click the hand raise icon um, next to your name, which will let me know that you'd like to speak to, you know, ask a question or share comments. Um, and as I pe see people do that, I'll unmute people individually for you to, to speak and to sort of share your, your thoughts verbally. We have one question um, that came in while we were chatting, and that's from mm -hmm. Laurel. Um, who asked, he said that they're planning to do a Michigan State statewide call-in day on July 27th um, after their July 26th rally so they can advertise the call-in day at the event. I mean, she asked if, if there's still value in doing that on the 27th since we're having a national call-in day earlier in the week. Um, and I want to say that that is, there is a ton of value in doing that. We think doing it after an event truly where you can publicize it and have, um, again, more volume. Call-in days are all about volume. So that's really powerful. And I think definitely um, there's still still value in doing that in your community. If you are planning a call-in day, let us know because we're going to send out state-specific emails. So we'll tell everyone in your state um, what events they have. We have uh, what, what events are planned for your state for which days. Um, and so being able to do it as there are on the 27th, then everyone in Michigan is calling in on the 27th um, rather than a different day. Um, and doing so really um, 
again, will bring that volume of calls to um, legislators' offices. And so I think that's, again, where the, where the power is going to come from. It doesn't matter that it's a different day than, you know, when someone in Ohio might be calling because everyone in Michigan is going to get called on, on that day. Uh, this is Joey. Laurel, thanks for that great question. I will say that a lot of what we're doing with the national events is it, with the mindset of people who don't have something going on in their particular community or state. So if someone would like to participate in the week of action and they live in, you know, Indianapolis where there's no event, um, maybe the national call-in day is something they could do. Uh, but for your event, if you're doing it on a different day, then completely ignore the national one and just go with what, what you guys are doing in Michigan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. Um, we don't have any other questions right now. Um, so I will throw out to the group, I'm wondering, um, are there any resources that you think would be really helpful for a successful Day of Action event that you aren't seeing through our website that maybe we could provide for you? Any respondents? Joey, one person wrote in to say that they have just recently found um, the letter writing templates, and also that's just because we just very recently added those those templates to our website. Um, but so that those will be helpful. But also asked if they would if it would be okay if they edited them um, to use for their community, and if we had any recommendations about how they might edit them. I mean, I, I think the best way to edit the letters will be to include. Um, your perspective and the perspective of your community. Um, the affordable housing uh, issue uh, is different from community to community. In places like, you know, um, Portland, Oregon or San Francisco, it'll all be about, you know, housing is way too expensive. We need more and more and more affordable housing, uh, which is true generally everywhere, but in cities like perhaps Detroit or Akron, people might be more focused on, you know, using money for demolition and making sure that quality housing is being built and that um, the habitability concerns are addressed and it might be about redevelopment. Um, so I think the, the situations are different. You should um, edit the letters and modify the letters to make them as locally um, poignant as possible and uh, can, can include some of the talking points that we have on the federal budget. You can include the points that are in the sample letters or take a look at our ta talking points on the website um, and include those as well. Yeah, um, and if you want, well, right now I know that the letter on the website is um, a PDF and perhaps we could go in and have a word option for you to still use the template and go in and, and modify it to your own needs. Yeah, but most importantly, just tell your story. Tell your local story. What are you dealing with? What are the struggles of the community you serve? Other questions? Um, we've got a couple of, one question, one comment that's come in. Uh, one comment from Pat Soberanis in San Rafael, California, who just shared that uh, they just posted an event on Facebook promoting a local event that they're hosting in San Rafael on the 29th. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing that. We'll go ahead and get it added to our website uh, later today. So thanks for sharing that. Others on the line, if you're similarly just now uh, creating and posting your Facebook event pages, uh, please get them to us either over email or you know share them with us in some way. And similarly, we'll get them up on our website right away. Great, thanks so much. And, and while we're doing that, Joy, would you, could you kind of explain to people why it's important to have a Facebook event rather than say just using their email list? Yeah, I think the great thing about the Facebook event is that people can very simply RSVP through the Facebook event. They just click on a box that says going uh, rather than have to send you an email to say that they're attending. It's also very easily shareable, right? So um, someone who gets that uh, Facebook event can very easily post it on their page and share it with um, people that they are friends with and, and sort of in their network. So a Facebook event is really great. It's also something that um, we can use to draw people in our network to your events and, and uh, sort of help build attendance. Great, and now um, Isabel Hedrick's on the line and she has a question. Isabel? Yeah, hi, um, I'm with a group in Austin, Texas and we are starting the process of putting all that stuff together. Hope to have a Facebook page soon. But um, my question was about logos. Do you guys have any 
uh, does it matter to you guys if we use the same logo around the country that you all have up on the website, or um, what about customizing the logo to look a little bit more local? Uh, I think my answer to that, Isabel, would be um, please use our logo and then perhaps an additional logo that you might create for your local uh, event. So can you say that again? I, you cut it. You cut out a little bit for me. I apologize. Um, I would say try to use the logo we have for the Our Homes, Our Voices event, um, and then add an additional maybe local logo. And the reason I say that okay. is just for consistent branding of what we're trying to do online and through social media. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think maybe adding a logo rather than changing the one we have was probably the best way to do it. But in the end, you know, we trust your judgment, of course. All right, thanks. Any other um, questions or comments from uh, from anybody here? We'd love, I mean, a lot of these questions I think are helpful for others to hear. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and write those in. Um, or if you, if you have them afterwards, certainly don't hesitate to email um, Joey, James, or me, um, or just email ourhomes at nlihc.org, um, and we'll get your question answered as quickly as possible. I'll also say, um, in addition to asking questions of us here at NLIHC, do any of you have questions you'd like to ask other attendees who are planning events in their community? Uh, is there something that you're struggling with that you think maybe some other local communities may have um, had some success with? This is Isabel. I'm just really interested in hearing what other folks are doing. Well, thanks, Isabel. If anyone wants to, um, wants to share, just raise your hand and we'll unmute you, um, and, and you should be able to speak without an issue. Take us, take us off, Isabel, could you share a bit more about y'all's event and what you have um, planned and what you're hoping to do? Yeah, so what we're, what we're hoping to do is start off on Saturday morning, Saturday the 22nd. Um, is that correct? Yeah, Saturday the 22nd in the morning in front of City Hall. Uh, we've asked the mayor to speak. He's penciled us in, although he could get called off. Um, thing. And... Um, just try to get as many people as possible in front of City Hall for an event and have speakers that include affordable housing consumers and touch on um, rental housing, home ownership, like with Habitat, um, and um, fair housing issues, uh, sort of how important all of that is. And then, uh, and also uh, the disability community is very heavily involved in this. Um, then, Teaching through the week and probably do a call, in, but we haven't really coalesced around that yet. That's great. That's a that's a busy week. Well done. Anybody else like to share about their event? No. Um, well, I think we can share uh, a, a few examples um, that are that are interesting and intriguing. One thing I'll ask is. If any of you are having success like the folks in Austin are in terms of attracting the attendance and participation of your mayor or of your elected officials, uh, please let us know uh, because we might um, tweet that out or share it as we're promoting uh, some of these events and trying to get people excited about a uh, week of action. Um, other than that, uh, we've seen a lot of groups take some really innovative approaches to uh, what they'll be doing uh, for Week of Action. I know in Illinois, they're going to be doing a series of site visits uh, the week following, and they will announce it during the Week of Action. Um, and when I say site visits, I mean uh, taking members of Congress to um, various locations where uh, federally funded or partially federally funded housing uh, exists in their respective districts. Uh, I know that in both Minneapolis and Phoenix, there will likely be some film screenings on issues concerning uh, affordable housing and homelessness. Uh, and we actually have some, some suggestions for what some good film screenings might be. Um, the voter registration drive that we mentioned for um, Friday, July 28th, uh, is something that we're trying to coordinate as much as we can through national networks of housing authorities and um, other uh, housing officials. And we're really hoping that um, a lot of groups will be doing voter registration 
community rooms or doing some door-to-door -door efforts. So if you have good connections with the PHA or other subsidized housing providers in your community who might participate, please let us know. Awesome. Thanks, Joey. Um, Isabel just wrote in to say she's gotten off the phone, but she wanted to um, mention also they're going to have a voter registration table at the rally. Oh, that's fantastic. So while we offer these as a selection of, of activities you can do, I'm pretty sure the folks in Austin may be doing every single one, <laughs> which is wonderful. Um, and Caitlin wrote in to say that in the Twin Cities, there's a statewide housing advocacy network, which is called Homes for All. Uh, they're, yeah, they're planning a screening of a local documentary. Um, and that and she, Caitlin wanted us to know in particular that it um, also focuses on the troubling tr trend of apartments being upscaled or flipped and tenants being um, displaced. Um, and then she, they'll follow that with a panel discussion um, with tenants and homeowners and others. That's actually a really great, uh, I'm very glad you shared that, Caitlin. Thank you. Um, because I know that um, the, the film screening that Homes for All will be doing covers an issue that has recently been sort of studied at the a data project that came out probably last October about upscaling in the Twin Cities uh, metro region. Um, and I, I think that's actually a great example of using a national event to, um, to lift up and promote um, some of the things that you're doing locally and just tie it in with what needs to be happening with the federal budget. Great. Well, I can, I can also add a little bit of what I know is going on in, in a few other places around the country. Um, so I know that our friends at the New Mexico Coalition to End Homelessness are working on a press event followed by a rally in Albuquerque that they've invited some uh, local uh, elected officials to. They may, may also be able to get uh, some federal elected officials to attend and be part of that. Um, they do a great uh, rally at the state capitol every year. Uh, centered around their statewide uh, legislative priorities, and so I'm sure that'll be a great event. Um, I know that uh, in Denver, uh, folks at the Colorado Coalition to End Homelessness are doing a site visit that'll be paired with a panel discussion that'll include some residents of the site that, that is to be visited, and it's one of the new uh, low-income housing properties that the coalition manages. Uh, that is part of this, uh, this sort of new trend in uh, transit-oriented um, development. Um, in Boston, uh, folks at CHAPA are working on an event that's likely to have the participation of the Boston mayor. And in Connecticut, uh, an event's being coordinated, a press rally and, uh, excuse me, a press conference with the uh, governor of Connecticut, uh, who's a longtime champion of affordable housing issues and who actually received NLHC's Edward Brooke Award a couple of years ago. So a couple of other great events to look forward there as well. Any other thoughts, questions, or things to share? Um, one, Jeanette Moss for just written from Empower Missouri. Um, she said they're going to have one or more events um, to share soon in Missouri. Um, they're first going to have a tour of a Salvation Army property in St. Louis, um, and they think that Senator Blunt or his staff will be able to join for a meeting uh, by webinar or teleconference um, as well if they're waiting to get confirmation. And that's a great reminder that this event is planned for when Congress is in session, um, and it's likely that your senator as a member of Congress may be um, in D.C., but certainly um, utilizing technology to do that is a fantastic idea, idea and way to get them involved um, if they're not willing to kind of get on board, like we hope Senator Blunt will be, uh, follow up and see if they could come um, during August recess, which starts the following week. Um, it's a great idea to, you know, even if this week does not work specifically, um, certainly capitalize on it um, for an event um, that may fit their schedule better. Yeah, and thank you, Jeanette, for writing in and reminding of us of, of that idea of what you're working on. That's, that's a great way, as I'm sure you're thinking about this, this is a great way to bring in and make sure people are included from across the whole state of Missouri. Of course, Missouri has got a huge geography, and so Empower Missouri, of course, works to make sure that people from across the entire state are included in programming and events and um, having something that allows people to join from a remote location is, is a great way to achieve that. Great. Thanks so much, Jeanette. And one other thing, so, um, Josh Heller from um, Iowa actually just emailed us at our homes um, with an update of an event page. So that's just a reminder that if you take a look at that 
local events page and you see information isn't quite correct or isn't um, complete, you got maybe added additional details or you now have a time when you didn't, um, please do let us know and so we can get that updated and so anyone who looks and sees, wants to see if there's an event in their community gets all of the um, most accurate and up-to-date information. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, please again be in touch um, as you're planning your events to share any updates and ask any questions um, and we will be in touch with you uh, to continue to share resources. Have a great day. Thanks everyone. Bye.